and President of uh, Airbus India, Rami Malad, Joint Secretary in my Ministry, Asan Bachu Mahauji, Deputy Chief Minister of Haryana, my good friend Dushyan Chaudalaji, Honorable Ministers present here from all four corners of the globe, from Fiji, Cambodia, Hungary, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Sweden, Tanzania, Honorable Ambassadors, Industry Captains, Delegates, Colleagues from the Centre, various state governments, representatives of the fourth estate, my friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure and an honor to welcome you to Wings India 2024. And the theme this year, Connecting India to the World in Amrita, setting the stage for Indian Civil Aviation at 2047. India has traversed, ladies and gentlemen, a long distance in our last 75 years of independence, reaching the point of our Amrit Kaal. And our journey from Amrit Kaal to our Shatabdi Kaal, from 75 years to our century, will be dotted along the way with new records a faster pace of development and a rising on the world stage based on our age-old philosophy of Vasudeva Kutumbakam. The world is one family. Now in that journey from Amritkar to Shatabhika from the 75th year of our independence to the 100th year of our independence. This concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, truly that the world is one family, cannot be better espoused by any other sector than our very own civil aviation sector. It is these aircrafts, these vehicles that connect people to people, that connect hearts to hearts, that are able to transform lives, bring about social progress, bring about economic progress, And aviation, ladies and gentlemen, in the last hundred years has ensconced and embodied relentless pursuit of innovation, relentless pursuit of advancement, and always led the technology curve in terms of bringing about new paradigms of innovation that then trickle down to other sectors across the globe. It is also a sector that provides a platform for exchange of ideas, for exchange of knowledge, for an exchange of experiences, 
and it is the pot puri or the bowl of bringing these ideas of information, knowledge and experience together that makes the world truly one in terms of evolving new solutions. It is also a sector, our civil aviation sector, that along with social development brings about truly the ability to transform lives. The economic multiplier capability of our sector for every rupee or dollar invested is 3.1. The employment multiplier for our sector direct to indirect for every job that is created by these aircrafts, these airports, every direct job that is created, there are six indirect jobs that are created. And mind you, this is not taking into account the other multiplier effects that come along with the establishment of an airport establishment of connectivity through civil aviation, new investment, new infrastructure, connectivity, all these are wonderful multipliers that accompany our sector's development. Now within this paradigm, India in the last decade under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been a shining star on the global firmament of civil aviation. A country that had only 60 million domestic travelers in 2014, pre-COVID, grew to 145 million. Last calendar year, 2023, we closed at 153 million. And it is our surmise that our passenger traffic on a daily basis, pre-COVID, the record was 4,425,000 passengers a day. We broke that in no season. In April and May this year, 450,000 passengers per day. And in last November, December, we crested that at 467,000 passengers per day. Domestic traffic in the last 10 years has grown at a CAGR, a compounded annual growth rate, a staggering, staggering CAGR of 15.3%. International traffic has grown at a CAGR of 6.1%. And today, India is the third largest domestic civil aviation market in the world, the seventh largest international civil aviation market in the world, and if you combine both, domestic and international, then the fifth largest civil aviation market in the world. Now on the one hand, when we talk about passenger traffic, on the other hand, cargo is a sector that must be also spoken about. Our domestic cargo traffic over the last 15 years has grown by close to 60%. Our international cargo traffic by close to 53%. And it is our considered opinion, our opinion, industry consultants' opinion, that today domestic traffic that last calendar year was at 153 million passengers by 2030. This number, from 60 million in 2014 to 153 million 
in 2023, within nine years, will grow to 300 million by 2030, ladies and gentlemen. Now that is the potential that India holds not only to herself, not only to Asia, but to the world. And mind you, let me say that even with achieving 300 million domestic passengers by 2030, we will still be, and I must emphasize, we will still be one of the most underpenetrated markets across the top 20 markets in the world. Which means that even at 300 million domestic passengers, today our penetration is roughly about 3 to 4 percent. That will grow to about 10 to 15 percent. We still have 85% penetration to go. That is the potential that this market holds for the decades to come from an Indian perspective. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, under the guidance of our Prime Minister, we are preparing for this potential. We are preparing for the potential by creating capacities, removing bottlenecks, simplifying procedures, so that by 2047, when India achieves her 100th year of independence, this civil aviation sector is able to support not a current $4 trillion economy, not a futuristic in the next three to four years, five and a half trillion dollar economy, but by 2047, our sector is able to support a 20 trillion dollar economy in our country. And therefore, the focus is not only on building airports, not only in creating capacity of aircraft. As far as those two areas are concerned, we had 74 airports in our country until 2014. 74 airports built in 65 years. In the last 10 years, we have modernized and built an additional 75 airports, water drones and heliports, taking that number to 149. And it is our target that by 2030, we will take that number of 149 to upwards of 200 airports, water ports, and heliports in our country. Whereas we talk about the capability of airports, we have reached tier two cities, tier three cities, that formerly had been wiped off the civil aviation map of our country. At the same time, we have kept our eyes on our metros because there is a hub and spoke model in the area of civil aviation. Our six metros back in 2021 had a throughput capability of 221 million. In the last two and a half years have grown to 261 million. And in the next four years, will have a throughput capacity of close to 420 million passengers with new, two new Greenfield airports, one coming up in Navi Mumbai and the other next to Delhi in Jaiwal. So two brand new Greenfield airports will be added to our portfolio in the days to come. Today we launched Quran 5.3. This regional connectivity scheme has truly transformed our arena and our sector. Cities that had not been connected before. People that could only see aeroplanes flying above their heads. 
through a viability gap funding model. Today, under Uran, infrastructure has been built at 76 airports, water drones and helipots. Close to 570, 570 new routes have been operationalized that couldn't have been dreamt of being operationalized in the past. And for this, I must thank our airlines who have come many steps forward and taken up that challenge. Along with that, we have transported close to about 14 million, close to about 133 million people from this Uran scheme with 251,000 flights being flown through this Uran scheme. We've also looked at, as Remy has said, at the last mile connectivity. That last mile connectivity through the higher penetration of helicopters, our northeastern states, our hilly states, Jammu and Kashmir, where we have launched a new Uran scheme only for helicopters and another one only for small planes. 19-seater to 36-seater planes. We launched a new heli portal. We launched a new heli disha. It is our aim in the future to expand the capability of our heliport so that every district in our country, in the future, every district has a modern heliport that is put in place. We also enhanced our safety and security issues, looked at capacity building, and with regard to capacity building, completely deregulated and brought about new policies for flying trading organizations, for MROs, done away with high rental rates, done away with the concept of royalties, and thereby allowed the MRO and FTO sector to flourish. Today we have close to 57 FTOs in India. The only helicopter FTO in Asia has been established in Kajarab. From 95 MRO facilities, we are now at 150 MRO facilities. And today, at this event, we have launched many MRO new joint ventures, one with Airbus, the inauguration of the GMR school, which I must congratulate the GMR group. I laid the foundation in September 2021. It will be an MRO school establishing engineers, not only for GMR's in-house MRO, but also for their competitors' MROs. And the degree that will be, they will get our engineers will not only be exposed to the curriculum of BGCA, the rules of BGCA, but international frontiers like EASA. And there will be a dual degree that our engineers will get, which will really improve the skill set from an Indian perspective. Last year, we resolved that we will create a new record. The total number of commercial pilot licenses given out in India was 1,622. The last record prior to that was 1,165 in 2022. And therefore, we've increased the number of CPLs in India by 40% within one calendar year. 18% of these 1,600 CPLs that were given out have been given out to our Nari Shakti, our women. And I'm proud to say that in India, 15% of our pilots and captains are women pilots and women captains, a world record across the globe. Women empowerment is a huge theme in India. And not only in the sector of commercial pilot licenses, but even as far as drones are concerned, it's the Prime Minister's resolve that India must become the global drone hub of the world. 
We have put together a new productivity linked incentive scheme for drones. We have brought about simplified and facilitative regulation for drones. We have brought about new demand in terms of a market from 15 government ministries for the drone sector alone. But it is the Prime Minister's resolve that by this February and this March, we will train the first batch of 1,000 nano drone DDs, women drone pilots that will navigate the skies of rural India through their prowess and their skill, raising that number to 10,000 by a government-sponsored scheme where they will be given full subsidy for their drones, free curriculum and pedagogy teaching, and insurance for their drone schemes. So therefore, our fervent target is to broaden our civil aviation sector, is to deepen our civil aviation sector. And with that, many structural changes have been brought about. Our sector was saddled with huge structural economic costs. Value-added tax on ATF, air turbine fuel, ranged between 1 to 5 percent in 12 Indian states and 25 to 30 percent in the balanced 24 union territories and states. Through huge perseverance, and I must from this podium thank the chief ministers of 19 states who have come forward, lieutenant governors and chief ministers, and 19 states have lowered their value-added tax on ATF from a burdensome 25-30% to between 1-4%. to And therefore in India today, we have 31 states and union territories that levy back on ATF of only 1 to 5 percent and only five outliers that are left in the higher bracket. And I'm confident that with the growth that we are seeing in civil aviation today or tomorrow, they will have to come onto the bandwagon and lower their back on ATF to provide capability to the people of their states. Along with this, we believe that we need to strengthen our institutional framework. We have been able to give DGCA, our ATCOs within the Airports Authority of India, new strength by increasing their capacities. Our air traffic controller strength in the last two years has grown from 2,700 to almost 4,000, an increase of 33%, and an additional 500 will be joining this year. Our security, Bureau of Control of Aviation Security, increased staffing of close to three to four hundred, so that this growth can be handled. It is not good enough just building airports, having more fleet size. The institutional bandwidth also needs to be strengthened. Today has been a landmark day for civil aviation in India. With the launch of Uran 5.3, with the inauguration of Airbus's Tata Joint Venture Training Center, with the announcement of Airbus's new manufacturing contracts in India, aerospace manufacturing, no pun intended, is at takeoff stage in India. You now have scale in India. Our fleet size has grown from 400 to 713. The largest orders in civil aviation history. Air India, 470 aircraft, 250 with Airbus, 220 with Boeing. Indigo's 500 order aircraft. Today, the largest air order aircraft by Akasa with Boeing 737, 150 aircraft. Today, India has become the largest purchaser of aircraft in the world after the US and China. That is the potential that India represents. And therefore our fleet size is going to grow from 713 to upwards of 2,000 in the next decade. That is the capability. I must on this day congratulate Akasa. 
India had been replete with stories of air lines shutting down. In the last eight years under the Prime Minister's growth initiative, we have seen the birth of a new airline in India. An airline that has grown from two aircraft to 20 aircraft within a period of 12 months. An order of 76 aircraft, of which 22 aircraft have landed in India. And today, another order of an additional 150 aircraft. This is a first, not in the civil aviation history of India. This is a first, not in the civil aviation history of Asia. This is a first, ladies and gentlemen, in the civil aviation history of the world of the globe. So India has placed the largest orders in the world with Air India and Indigo. India has had a first child in the form of an airline that is born that has scaled 0 to 2 to 20 aircraft within one year. India through Iran has given birth to five new regional airlines. Star Air, India One Air, Fly 91, Fly Big, Air Taxi. These are stories that are unfolding in India hitherto never occurred but have occurred under the pioneering leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. It is his prerogative, it is his wish, it is his sankal, his commitment that in the last 10 years the democratization of civil aviation has taken place. Every single citizen must have the ability to fly in an aircraft. And therefore my sector, the civil aviation sector,